Welcome to Comfort Time with Auntie Unike, where we share testimony stories. Our story for today is Step Parenting. Step Parenting, I shared a video earlier and the link will show. Those who didn't see it can have a look at it. That one was Step Parenting, the positive side of Step Parenting. The story for today, however, is the challenging side of Step Parenting. And challenging for who? Challenging not for the parents, but challenging for the child or for the children. So I'm going to share a story of a friend of mine growing up and what not only she went through, but what I too went through. And still parent parenting happens for many, uh, many, many reasons. Sometimes there's a death in the family, sometimes there's a divorce, you know, some breaking up. Sometimes um, just people fail to take care of their own children and you find yourself stepping in as a parent. So, so many things happen in life that make us now start looking after children that are not our own. In this case, my friend found herself living with a stepmother because her father decided he didn't want her mother anymore and chose someone else but he still wanted to educate his daughter so he wanted to take the child so the woman had to go and live in the village as he lived in town with his new wife and daughter and the wife was not happy to be because she didn't have children of her own at that point so she didn't want to have a child but was forced to because they came as a package with the man that uh, she got herself involved with and eventually got married to. So you know as young girls growing up as young children all we knew was to play, go to school, have a good time, have fun, go and eat, maybe get told off by our parents, do our chores, and that was our life. So I did that, she did that. I never took time to understand that uh, what I took for granted, the life that I was living with my parents, where um, I was happy, and I just assumed she was also happy. Because she was such a bubbly uh, child, we had such fun. I didn't know she was not happy until she came of age. She was only 12 or 13 at the time. Now, in our tradition, especially then, they really took it seriously. When you come of age, and coming of age is starting your first period. So when you do that, you are confined to your room for sometimes a month, two months, but mostly maximum is three months. And when they confine you to that room, you cannot go to school. The good, your own parents or someone who is a good parent or someone who is not out to get you or to punish you will allow you to go to school and then come home and get confined to your room. But in this case, the stepmother really wanted to torture her. So she decided no going to school for the whole two months or three months. She is to stay in her room. She could not step out. She could not do anything but stay in the room. And now she was worried because of school. So when I went to see her, she told me I could not see her. I went to talk to mom to see if she could help. Mom managed to talk to her, but the only thing mom managed to get is that I get to see her. She couldn't talk to her about letting her to go to school. So when I shared with mom how unfair that was, she says, oh, count yourself lucky because this would not happen to you because your father would not hear of such because we're really um, Catholic uh, family and most of those things that did not believe in most of the traditional things that he felt were limiting to the children. So 
now after she gave permission that I could go and see her, I went and I asked if I could see my friend because I wanted to share with her the notes from school. You will not believe what she told me. She said, yes, I agreed that you can come here and see your friend, but there's a condition. I was like, okay, what is the condition? She says, for you to sit with her in her room and share your schoolwork with her, you need to speak to me in my language. And you know, in the Copper Belt, we spoke Bemba. It doesn't matter which uh, tribe you were. I came from Eastern Province, so I come from Eastern Province. I speak in Senga, and I'm sure if you've been consistent watching my videos, you've heard phrases of me speaking in Senga. So I spoke in Senga at home with my mom, but with everybody else. I spoke Bemba, which is the language that we use on the Copper Belt. So now I was like, the language she was asking me to speak was not a very easy language and uh, not many people use it. So I was like, okay, but how will I do that? She says, I don't know how you do it, but you will not get past me without speaking to me in my language. You greet me, you ask me how my day was and blah, blah, blah then you get allowed to go in. I was like, okay. So I went, looked for people who were of her tribe, asked them, how do I say this? How do I say this? How do I say this? And they told me, so I got access to my friend. When I was there, I quickly did um, our work. We worked together. I shared with my friend what the mother had done. And it was only then she told me how evil her stepmother was that sometimes she would cook food and then call her to the table and when she goes to the table she would say something so demeaning something so hurtful that she, my friend would just leave the table in tears and then afterwards when they've cleared the plates and everything say yeah I didn't want you to eat you did well to leave the table that's why I did what I did to you but I was like, you know, you, you should treat your mother, your, your, your stepmother. When she does that, just say, I'm not moving, I am eating. Let, her, let all the insults, all the horrible things bounce off you. But, you know, we are different. She's not that type of a person. Because if she had been my stepmother, oh, I was going to just ignore her. Say, don't eat, I eat, don't what, but she was not that kind of a person. So she was sensitive and she, she would really be hurt. So she didn't hit her because she didn't want her husband to know that she was abusing her. So she resorted to psychology, to mistreating her, to, being, to saying horrible things to her. And you know, sometimes those things are actually more painful than when someone hits you because when someone beats you it hurts and after some time it's not painful anymore but a horrible way the horrible saying you know it stays with you someone tells you you amount to nothing you, you know it she was trying to break her and why would such an old woman deal with a child like that like has been said, what happens to us is not our fault, but healing is our responsibility. That woman clearly was reacting to her own pain. She grew up in an environment where she was abused, and so she was now bleeding over everyone she was meeting, because that's what happens when you don't deal with your trauma when you are hurt as a child or as an adult in a relationship and you don't deal with that trauma you now start bleeding on people that you are meeting people who had nothing to do with your pain people who had nothing to do with your injury so it's very important that you realize and acknowledge that i need help and seek the help so that you can enjoy your life and help others to enjoy theirs. So anyway, the story continues. 
I, I ended up now learning the language. So something good came out of that horrible thing that she was trying to do. And I was able to help my friend with the schoolwork. At least she was able to see someone out of, you know, instead of being confined to a four walls and waiting for the women over the weekend to come and teach her all sorts of things. And I'm glad that these days the people who teach girls are being told to concentrate on hygiene. When a girl comes of, on, of age, the only thing you need to tell the child is about hygiene and maybe other things that, um, that she can relate to, how to behave towards uh, the adults, you know, peers and stuff like that. But some of the things that they were now teaching the poor children, even other children who were in the same situation, is that they teach you how to take care of a husband. You are 12, 13, maybe even 14 if you delay. Why would you be interested in knowing how to take care of a husband? So I'm glad that this is now being told to the people training the children that they separate the two. They teach the child who comes of age, hygiene and respect. And they leave the um, issues of uh, marriage to when the child is getting married. So this is what happened to my friend. And in Bemba, there's a saying that says, Ngakula Sanikwa. Basically, it just means if it was possible to see what happens in the future. So that woman even had her own children, I think two or three later. But when now she was old and needed help, the only person who could take care of her was the child she had abused. She kept on wondering what wrong she had done. She couldn't even see the wrong that she had done. And when she died, it was the same child that she had abused who took care of everything, gave her a befitting burial because she was living with her. So she did everything for her. She totally forgave her. She had such a big heart and God blessed her for all that she did. Because what happened now is that she got married to a prince in shining armor. She got three beautiful children and she's now enjoying life with her husband, with her children and with her grandchildren. And all that is in the past. So do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. I think that is in Matthew 7, 12. So do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. She was not treated fairly, but she treated her fairly and that helped her to see that she had been wrong. But God blessed her. The person that hurts you may not realize, but do it for you. When you forgive, you are forgiving to free yourself. You are not forgiving to say what that person did to you is, is okay. No. You are just saying, I'm letting go of all this. I want to live my life and I want to be happy. And you'll be amazed how free you feel and happy, how happy you will be. And that will not even touch you. So do that for you. Forgive for you, for your sake, for your own happiness, not for others. It's not a weakness. You are forgiving from a point of strength. I hope this helps you to forgive others and also to know that you should do to other people as you would like them to do unto you. If you ask yourself in every situation you find yourself, this that I'm doing to this person, if someone did this to me, how would I feel? If your answer is not good, don't do it. So thank you very much for watching. If you have not yet subscribed, please do. And always remember to give us a thumbs up. It helps the channel to grow. 
and share widely so many people can listen to our stories. Stay blessed. See you in the next video.